Well, hey everybody, it's Steve at Thousand Year Homes. Welcome aboard. So what am I working on today? Well, I'm digging a big hole, and I'm digging a big hole because rain is finally coming in the forecast. That driveway a year ago was just a mud pit, and uh, what I did to get rid of that was I dug this spillway here that turned into a quite functional uh, pond, a stock pond. It just went dry. And so I drove down in it today. It's actually uh, dry enough that my tractor doesn't sink so I could start working in it. So what I'm gonna do is a couple of different things all at once. So I'm gonna dig out this stock pond, level it off. I'm going to cut in a little river here with a bridge over it. That bridge is gonna imitate what's going on with the, uh, the reciprocal ceiling on my house. So it's gonna be an Archimedes bridge over then it's going to be a uh, coyote fence then it's going to be lava stone and then it'll be a concrete with a perlite in it or something like that the reason why i'm putting in that bridge isn't just decorative i want to have something low and on the ground that's an analog to the roof so if you imagine a, a bridge right here that's actually my roof material and the purpose of that is i can inspect this which will have a lot more wear and tear and kind of get a feeling for what's going on on the roof that'll be 20 feet above my head when I do that on the house so anyway I really don't have time right now for a decorative piece but it's more than a decorative piece it's actually the uh, proof of concept for the roofing material and that's why I'm doing that so what I want to do is I want to finish digging this thing out that's about the right depth uh, maybe a little deeper maybe a little wider cut in a little spot here dig this all out so it holds more water I almost made it through the drought this year almost I just ran out of water so I'm thinking if I dig this all out just a little more that poor little tractor that's uh, really not built for this thing but it's what I have <laughs> and so uh, I, I might rent, uh, it's $800 to rent a big tractor. I might rent a big tractor, but uh, I'm going to want to get it here and then have the rains come and all that. Uh, there's my cattle. They're, they're in the, pad, the pasture. I'm letting them eat this dry old grass uh, to reduce the fire load as well as there's nothing left to eat. Uh, it's, it's pretty rough out here. So anyway, that's what we're working on. It's too windy for me to put a drone in the air. Uh, that idea came across my mind, but let me work on this a little bit. If I could get this side and that side dug all the way out where I want it, do that cut in, I might put the bridge in while I, I work on the rest of this. We'll see. All right, so let's, let's take a look at this and talk about strategy here a little bit. So uh, when a, the clay gets this dry, and solid it's hard for me to uh, to dig it out it honestly is it just becomes like clumps of concrete but I'm gonna give it a try the goal here will be to uh, dig this area out uh, and I did a little bit last year I did a little bit you know here a little there a little till it doesn't dry out anymore and it holds water this spot just dried out last week and of course it was too wet for me to work in there uh, but I could still get a blade in it now it's just right so that's about three and a half foot down what I'd like to do is break it all like I did there so that uh, the cattle don't fall in it and drown and it's kind of a more gradual uh, pond so uh, you know I'll leave an edge there in the uh in the trees but the rest of it will be just scooped out all i want to do is scoop out that dirt i'm using to for two things i'm building up that little road there which is just a horse cut through uh but also you'll notice that this i've got a little bank here that's going around what happens is when texas it rains all at once 30 37 inches of rain a year and we get that in three days that's just slightly exaggeration we get well, i have 315 sunny days a year i have about an average of 40 days of rain more or less uh, plus maybe two or three snow days max max but what happens all that comes at once and i have seen it myself this actually turns into a little river <laughs> runs that way it floods that drive 
that fills this all up over tops comes here runs over over the top of these berms and all the way up towards the house so what I'm going to do is I'm going to build the berms up so that the water won't run towards the house at all I'm going to cut in a swale here so that I can plant pecan trees that don't dry out all my trees died again this year they're just uh, twigs now dead twigs and uh, so I'll have high ground there I'll have a swale with a berm here keeping the water away and then this will be uh, my pond in this paddock for me to take care of the animals here. I'm hoping to get it to where it always holds water. I might even put on a well on a windmill that would top this thing off with, uh, you know, water. We'll see. But let me put you on stop motion while I do that. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep scooping out on this side and running over there and dropping off. So. I think uh, I'll put you over here. I think you'll be out of the way. Well, it's evening. I'm tired. I'm ready for dinner. All right, so what, what did we get done here? Let me take a look. Yeah, that's pretty boring in the video. Let me see here. I can give some scale. All right, I'm standing in it. It's up to my uh, the bottom of my chest, my rib cage. So I'm going to say three and a half foot deep here on this end. Right here is where I'll cut the river in. The bridge will go over this. And then I'm gonna say I've got um, maybe maybe a foot or more dug out there that wasn't. Uh, all I'm doing is going around and around <laughs> and around. But you can see that this uh, clay is more like, in fact, it sounds like bricks. It sounds like stones. Those are not stones, those are clay baked in the Texas sun and even once I get the hard stuff cut away that is really good pond clay I mean it is it's dark and rich and you know it's just uh, powerful good clay I could make pots out of this all right so then I'll keep working my way this way uh, this little Mahindra punch is way above its weight class I keep saying that uh, you know, I greased it all up and got it ready before I did this and um, real real happy with it. So what am I doing with the dirt? Uh, well, I'm uh, building this road up here as I mentioned early in the thing. So uh, this always floods. This floods here. I know it's it doesn't look like it. It's old brother. Where art thou? <laughs> uh, brown, but it actually floods and uh, so what I'm doing is I'm, pa I'm packing the clay road up here, which will just be a horse trail, trail, right? It'll just be a horse trail, but I'll get it all packed up all the way in. Again, that'll keep the water in there, into the swale. The swale will run into the gardens. The gardens will run into a, um, oh, a sunflower field. And uh, in those swales, I'll plant my, uh, my pecan trees. And I'm hoping that... Uh, once I can keep the cattle out of here and the horses that I can actually get things to grow. I don't know. Every year, uh, the cattle and the horses, whatever I plant, they get interested in and they kill it. They graze it right away. 30 acres of other stuff to kill. If I put in a little sapling right there tomorrow, it'll be gone. They'll graze it out. It's ridiculous. And then uh, to make sure I could keep working in this pond as it gets deeper, 
uh, you know, I'm cutting in ramps, earthen ramps here as I go, and it'll be okay. You know, the rain will come up and just fill it in, and this will be a gentle thing. And should I have a drought and need to open this part up again for the animals, they won't be falling in, you know, they'll have a nice gentle lean to it. So I'm hoping to get to this where I, I can build that uh, bridge slash a roof uh, pilot. Um, all right, I'm gonna wash up for the evening. Call it a day. I always do that and then forget. Snap, it'll be the next day. I'd go like that, it'll be the next day. So I can only start after I'm done with my regular work. So five o'clock till seven-ish. It's a little after that. The sun is actually gone. Just this is a really good camera and it does low light really well, but it's darker than the camera's showing. So anyway, uh, pretty happy. Let me keep working on this thing. Well, day two of my pond dig. Oh, whatever they do. All right, so there we go. So uh, tractor's already running. What I'm doing is I'm taking the backhoe. As I showed you, this, uh, this clay is like rock and you can't just take a little lightweight tractor like that and uh, shovel and just cut into it. Now, I, I was able to scrape the surface dust off, right, which is uh, sugar sand, we call down here. But as soon as I hit to the clay layer, especially if it's been exposed to the sun, it's, it's brick hard. So I'm taking a backhoe and I'm grabbing each one of those clay, I don't know, uh, oxagonal, you know, the way they dry, and just prying them up like dragon scales, right? Drag, And then I could get in there with the bucket and scoop that out. And um, I'm going to keep going across to like a foot at a time, a foot at a time, a foot at a time, until I hit three or four feet deep. And uh, then I'm hoping that <clears throat> since I've seen this flood a couple of times, I know that it'll fill up a couple of times a year. Um, if you make a pond too big and you end up with just a puddle in the bottom of it, that looks pretty bad. So what I'm trying to do is smaller, deeper, uh, to kind of keep the heat uh, uh, down and evaporation rate. So smaller, deeper here in Texas, as deep as my clay will go. Um, and then of course I'm building that road. So I'm going to put you back on stop motion on day two. Maybe I'll get the drone out, fly it over me uh, after later on when I'm a little deeper. Um, and when I get all the way where it's too deep for me to easily climb out, then I'll come back in from this end. Let me show you. That has an earth ramp that's a pretty good size. I'll build the bridge here, uh, get it all set up, cut in, and then keep going all the way. So what I want is small, deep pond is what I want um, so that I don't have as much evaporative loss. In addition, here in Texas, I've decided I'm going to plant uh, trees, even if they're mesquites around the edge, because I think shade uh, is a better source of uh, preventing evaporation than worrying about tree roots wicking something up. And if I use something like mesquite, they're not a thirsty tree anyway, so uh, you know I might use uh, mesquite if I could get one big mesquite, because they can be beautiful, y'all. They can be beautiful. Uh, it just takes them a long time to turn from a scruffy, mean-spirited weed in the ground to a majestic tree. But, you know, we'll see. Uh, a little bit at a time. I'd, I don't have to win the world right now, but the roof I want to get done so that I have an allegory, an analog rather, that I could check. So it is, that's kind of a priority. Uh, let me keep working forward on that. So y'all, you can either work or you can use a drone, but trying to do both of them. Look, I crashed my drone in the tree. <laughs> All right, so, you know, back to my, uh, this is very hard work, even with a tractor. So I have to pry up the, uh, I'm gonna call them dragon sc scales of clay, get a pile of it. And then uh, the bucket doesn't like to pick that up. It, it really does, and it skips off of it. But. Uh, Let's go ahead, fly over, take a look at the stock pond. Take a look at all the land about here. There, there is no green. Uh, like I said, today, uh, the forecasters, a whole bunch of, uh, whole month of October, most of September, not a drop. That's 60 solid days. And I know the rest of the nation's getting snow, but it's in the high 80s, early 90s here, just a dry wind very dangerous. Uh, a fire gets loose out here 
it's big trouble here in Texas. So um, this poor uh, stock pond, but it survived two years of drought and always kept a little bit in there. And I'm gonna believe that it's gonna keep a little bit more. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> well, let me let me fly it on home and take a look at what I'm doing here overhead. See if I could see anything. It's it's hard on the little cell phone that's controlling the uh, the drone. I don't really see it. Forgive the wind. All it is is wind and hot and dry. Wind and hot and dry. So, all right. Well. Once again, I can either fly a drone or I can work. This is very hard to, to do both at the same time. But uh, you'll see what you see what I'm doing, right? Breaking up the ground. It's too hard to get a bucket in. Then I scrape up those big blocks of clay and drive them off and put them in that little little driveway that I'm going to build up. These things are hard as bricks, let me tell you. <laughs> Well, I, I'm not going to call that a good evening, but I'm going to stop filming. Uh, I could either work or film, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I'm liking what I've got here. Let me take a look. I'll pull the camera off the tripod. We'll do a little walkabout. This is, uh, I'm going to guess, 40% of the way that I want to be for this, this pond this year. I don't know if I'll go deeper, but um, that's it. And I have a good run in here, an earthen ramp here. So right here where... Uh, this earth dam is I'm going to cut into it and just wide enough for the tractor and then I'm going to come into this and I'm just going to start trenching this out with a fairly uh, fairly aggressive depth now uh, if I end up with piles of dirt here that's all right because some of it I'm going to use for earth bag around this and I'm going to make it look like red rock which uh, I'll put a picture up of the red rocks in this area I want that to look like a little cliff, this to look like a little cliff, and the bridge to go over it. And I was even thinking I might make the bridge at a, um, an arc, I don't know, a semicircle coming across that. We'll see. I don't know how creative I can get or not. But, uh, you know, again, this thing's uh, three and a half foot deep all the way around. I, I think maybe if I get it all the way down to you know, to four feet all the way across before the rains come, that would make me happier. Then I might start taking passes and maybe dig some holes in it for, you know, catfish or something. <laughs> so, you know, most of it will be four feet and then I'll have some six foot uh, deeper and then I'll just keep going down. Again, small and deep, I'm thinking maybe it won't go as dry as fast. But uh, the sun is setting right there on the horizon. I don't work when it's dark, but um, I did want to get that done. Let's take a look at the road here that I'm raising up. Now this isn't a road that I'm going to drive on other than my tractor occasionally. This is a horse road. But uh, when it floods, then my horses take the gravel and, you know, they tromp holes in it. They don't like the gravel. They don't like the feel on the bottom of their feet. It kind of hurts. They prefer the dirt. So if I can get this up high enough when this floods, then they'll take this and they'll leave my drive away alone so it doesn't um, get all mushy. I'm going to dig this out eventually. This is where the water comes in. It does a lazy river kind of a thing underneath a buried pipe. Pops out here on this end. I've got a, a you know old cement here. I'm going to put some old cement there as well so that it's a little uh, bigger and the frogs go in there and hide during the summer. So I've only seen one uh, snake down in here hibernating or whatever. Uh, it's not hibernation, brumation. Brumation when it's this hot, they're brumating. And uh, one frog brumating. Uh, I do try to rescue them and get them where they belong. These particular little chickens are called uh, blazes because they're so fast. They run around, they're real hard to catch. And then I have two there. Now I let my chickens out before sunrise today, and I'm missing two. <laughs> so I, I suspect that I, I lost a couple this morning by letting them out too early. So I'm going to leave them locked up tomorrow. So uh, whatever happened, I drove around looking for them, and I didn't find them. I don't hear them. I looked in, you know, oh, maybe they got in my car or something like that or in the horse trailer. No, I do not find them. 
So tomorrow we'll be cutting into that sidewall, uh, unless it rains heaps of rain tonight, and then I'll just live with the, the pond the way it is. But I'll cut into that sidewall tomorrow and uh, try to take all of that out and get it all to the four foot depth. And then from there, I'll, I'll put the bridge in. And then if the tractor passes under that, I could dig potholes in the, the pond, deep holes, if you will. Maybe it'll hold, uh, the stock pond up there holds, as you saw from the uh, drone flight, we'll see. All right, so I've been working a couple of days, part-time after hours, uh, digging out this stock pond. The goal is to make everything this deep, right here. Well, this is my goal, right here. And that one's uh, two feet different. So today I'm gonna start by cutting into this uh, earthen dam and I'm just going to keep moving forward with it and then enlarging that out as I go. So I'll end up put building a ramp so that I can just drive up and dump the, uh, the dirt up there. But at first we'll start right here. And uh, so that's the plan today, is to cut that in. Let's get going. I'm going to put you on stop motion. We'll probably play a song or something, but you'll get to watch me cut in here. You know what, I, I'll leave your on. I'll leave your on while I do the initial cut in. Let's do that. I have no idea how long this video is gonna be. I'll move you over here and we'll take a look at this together. All right, I changed my mind up. I was gonna drive down into there and work from down there, but I think I'm gonna cut it in here. That way I can see how wide the wheels are and build up a, a lot of material in there before I drive down rather than dig it out, drive out, turn around, come back. I think this will be even faster. We'll find out together. How about that?
Well, I think this gives some perspective of how deep I'm getting it. Uh, you know, waist high all the way around, and I haven't even done the bottom yet. Uh, moving the dirt over to the road over there. It's, it's hard to build with a little teeny tiny tractor. But there we go, dirt going in. What's hard about it is uh, the small amounts, but this is a small pound, and I think I can get it with this little tractor. So we'll find out. I'll work over it this weekend. Whatever I get done, I get done this year, we'll find out. I'm gonna put you on stop motion while I do the rest of this. Well, this is a lot more hard work than it shows on the video, I'll tell you that. So I'm running out of gas. Uh, let me go ahead and do a quick walk through here. I'm gonna get a soda too. My whole sinuses are stuffed up with dust. So I went ahead and cut that little spot there where I'm gonna put a bridge on both sides. Uh, working my way up. Uh, when I get very filled, I'm gonna put in here and start working this area. And if a torrential rainfall came tonight and filled this all back up, I, I could accept this. But I'm going to keep working this entire weekend and hopefully get this all the way done. And really, this this would be about the final size and shape unless I got a uh, you know big backhoe, not a little tiny 26 horsepower um, lawn tractor. <laughs> all right, let me go get some gas. Well, day four of my pond build. So. It's hard to believe I'm standing where there was a flood once upon a time because it's just dry, <laughs> desiccated even. So uh, what have I gotten done? Well, I, I chopped through the earthen dam and I've made a little dent here. Um, I'm just gonna get, bring the backhoe around, just more of the same. Now it is the weekend so I can work a full eight hours. My goal today is to be done with the pond dig out Tomorrow I'll shore up the edges and pack anything that I need to pack and uh, get the, the bottom proper. I'll pack the clay in that I can. There's not any moisture, so it's hard to press down on it. Um, and uh, maybe Sunday I can get the bridge built over this part. Right here is where there, there'll be a little decorative bridge. Again, the whole purpose of the bridge isn't, uh, I'm not in a landscaping mode right now, but the purpose of the bridge is to make an uh, analog of the roof. It'll be built the same way, probably one-fifth scale, one, uh, maybe uh, uh, one-half scale of what the roof rafters will be, uh, because I want to make sure that that building technique that I haven't seen done, except in old Alamos and old missions here in Texas, uh, just to make sure that it'll hold up and uh, by having a bridge here there'll be a little bit of traffic over it there'll be a lot of uh, weather on it there'll be a lot more um, pressure on it than on a roof so as I see the bridge go I'll know where the roof is and hopefully the roof will last um, beyond my lifespan and thousand years we'll see so uh, anyway uh, let me, without further ado, go ahead and turn on the uh, stop motion. Just get on this. It's just going to be more of the same uh, today. Just uh, I have to chisel out the mud, uh, the clay, because it's so hard. And then uh, once it's in fragmented pieces, I can come in with a bucket. And as long as the bucket isn't on top of a piece, if it lands on top of a piece, the bucket just skips off. So I have to cut in and, and scoop it out and drive it away. 
I've got uh, about half the road done. Let me show you. So when this floods, uh, it floods up the horse path. And then because it's going up the horse path, it will go into the build site. Well, I, I don't want all the water running that way. I want it running into the gardens and then uh, to a sunflower field. So once I'm done with the road build up, then I'll come in here and I'll, I'll dig out this, this uh, swale a little better, remove a lot of that wood. The swale will run into the garden. You'll see that I've got a notch in the garden. I've got a notch over to that. So this is, uh, does have some irrigation channel. And then I'll pop out the back of the second, the back of the second uh, Hugel culture and go into my sunflower garden. So anyway, more of the same today. Let me get on it. I did find some oak trees uh, snuggled up in all of these mesquite though, some pin oaks. So I'm gonna liberate those and do a little work back here as well. You know, once I'm done with this. It's a pretty rough little road, I'll tell you that. Once I, until the rain comes and the clay breaks down into a, a earth again, uh, you know, it's, it's like driving over rubble. All right, there we are. We're making a little dent here. Not bad considering I only had a few hours in the evening to work. Let's take advantage of today. Now I have to take just a minute from the uh, pond dig to clean up all these mesquite around here so that I can build the swale uh, because that's where I'm at, the, that's what point I'm at. So let's take a look. These the mesquite, uh, if you prune them up, they can be glorious, but they sure do shed a lot and there's a lot of junk. So, uh, so I'm just gonna move this over to my Hugo culture and put it around my garden, which will help if it's a big log and I think I could cut something out of it, I will. 
So <clears throat> before I do that, I need to get my gloves because the scorpions, the wolf spiders, the recluse, the blister beetles, the uh, rattlesnakes, uh, what else has taught me? Black widows, um, especially the scorpions. I get stung by those all the time. The fire ants. What else am I missing? I'm missing, I'm missing a lot of things that sting and bite in old wood here. Uh, but that, you get the point. You get the point that if I don't get my gloves on and try to move any of that without my gloves, I'm just going to pay for it. So let's get that moved here. I won't bore you with, uh, well, maybe I will. That's part of this whole deal. This is my personal journal on what I'm doing, so fine, I'll bore you. Broad banded copperheads, cow killer, wasp. I don't know if they're an ant or a wasp. Poison ivy. The mesquite itself, the thorns can give you blood poisoning. Since we're on to plants, we could talk about green briar. I mentioned poison ivy, poison oak, stinging nettle, goat's heads. I think that's about it. What is that? About 20 things that can bite me while I'm working on lumber. Look right there, whatever that bristle, whatever that thorn bush is, I, I think those are dewberries to be honest. The spring those put a little raspberry kind of thing on it, but the rest of the time they just cut you. I think I'm going to put all the big ones together, maybe. That's about it. A Bubba Gump shrimp, all the things that can bite me in a log here in Texas. I guess I could start talking about blood poisoning and tetanus and spirococcus and all them kind of things if I knew more. Anyway, got some gloves on. Not even close to lunch, guys, so stop with the cons. <clears throat> now you might say, well, that'll keep cattle out. Not this high, it won't. They just step right over it. And then if they don't, can't step over it, they take their hooves and stomp it down. A hungry cow won't stop, be stopped by anything, in my opinion. Sure do like to eat. They like to eat the same things we like to eat. Well, except we like to eat them. <laughs> One thing I like about this is every piece of wood is valuable. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to think about it. Oh, I'm sure you could stack it prettier than me. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. It ends up looking good, even when it's just all messy. Feels right in a Pioneer. 
All right, so that's what I do with old mesquite. Yeah, there's a burn ban out here, but why burn it when it can be actually valuable? So I turn it into an old Hugo culture. One of my gardens is a moon shape, full moon, and that's this crescent moon. If I ever got around to building another garden in here, which I doubt, obviously a waxing, waning, and full. Oh, sorry, welcome to my world. You guys get a sharp stick in the eye? All right, back to uh, working on the pond now that I got that wood out of the way. Well, I have to take a break every now and then from just working in the uh, working in the pit to getting the next stage set up. Which the next stage here is right here. Now the cattle walk back and forth and knock all this down. There's a culvert right here.
Well, I'm halfway through the day of my pond. Uh, day four, but this is the first full day. Oh, I just took a quick lunch, but it's really two o'clock. So what do I got done here? Well, I got a pretty good trail. If you look real closely, now the entire pond makes a little bowl shape that's going to be caught up in here when it overflows and it'll run into the garden. I'm putting a curb on this driveway. It never had it. It just had a super sharp crown. And if you wandered off a little bit, it got to feeling uncomfortable. It had enough of a pitch. It was uncomfortable. Rebuilt the little pipe culvert. So when I overtop this with clay, uh, that'll look pretty good. That does look much better. So now when it floods, it'll flood, you know, like that and fill this, of course. All right, well, cattle aren't the smartest thing in the world. So here on this side, I do have a ramp for animals to get out of. And you'll see that I'm building a, a wall there that's probably a little too steep for calves to get out of. So what I'm gonna do is start working on a ramp. Now I'm gonna make a ramp on this side as well. So I'm gonna start working on that. And then if I get all the way done with the day before it rains, you see there's little powder marks of rain. It rained for about four seconds. I'm gonna guess four seconds. Just enough to make the mold grow. So if I get enough time, I'll dig this lazy river out a little bit. I'll dig out that culvert on that side and put down some cement. I find when I drive through here, every rare now and then I'll drive through with a vehicle, uh, it's a little narrow. So that widened it a little bit, but I'll put some concrete buttressing on this side too so I don't drop a wheel in. I'll finish this all up. I made that a lot deeper. Fix the lazy river where how the water gets in. It all pours off of this hillside, comes down, follows into here, and that's how it fills this up. Comes from over there too but I have a, a pipe, a culvert right there that brings it in. All right, now as it brings it all in, it'll uh, stay in this area here. <clears throat> it'll fill up and I'm trying to keep it away from the construction site. So you'll see I've got a little berm. If that's not enough, I'll, I'll do a deeper berm. So what I'm working on now is, while I'm doing all that simultaneously, is this swale the same time so I want the overflow to run there into the garden. Once it irrigates that, then I want it to overflow into the next garden, then exit out the back and go into a field of uh, sunflowers that I'll put in. I can only put in gardens and sunflowers when I keep the animals out of here. Old Hank and Blaze might let me keep those things. I doubt it though, but uh, Anyway, I've got them fed up over there. They're all doing good. But it's the cattle that are hugely destructive. The horses are a little destructive. The cattle are hugely destructive. All right. Let me go ahead and download what's on this camera. Put some fresh batteries in and go back there and finish the other half of it, which is uh, digging out that last little bit before rain, hopefully.
Well, day four, I got done. So three half days, one full day to dig this pond. I'm gonna guess 30, 50,000 gallons, easy. Um, let me think here. Well, uh, I left a little bit of crumbles on the ground so that as the rain fills up, little frogs and things that find their way here will, will have little homes to, you know, to call their own because it won't fill all at once, I don't think. But I'm digging it. I left a ramp on both sides. The cattle can get up on this side if they fall in. And, of course, that's got a running ramp on it. Feels pretty good. Now, if uh, this fills up and then goes dry, <laughs> but if I, I fill it up and it overflows, then I know I could dig it out a little more. So I'm not going to put walls on it yet. But right here, between these two outcroppings, there will be a uh, Archimedes bridge with a place to sit and overlook. And then I'll cement it and I'll use all the same things I'm using on the ceiling to prove that. I'm feeling pretty good. So I've, I finally got a berm tucked in on that road, which will be a little more, oh, safe feeling. If you go off a little bit or you're pulling a trailer, sometimes you can feel the crown is really pronounced now it's a little gentler all right feels good and then all the dirt went into here so we, this pond is actually a bowl that overfills and then goes and floods my gardens which i'm hoping that i can have decent gardens this year i still haven't solved for water out here there's i'm a dry cabin so it's just me and the horses so i'm able to, to truck it in and i still have the stock pond but just the time, I, I think those clouds may get real and might come in maybe. I got a little spatter and of rain. I, I just worked through it today. But looks good. I'm feeling good about all of this. There's a few odds and ends that I'll do tomorrow before I start the bridge. But you could build a dig a pond in four days with a small, small tractor. That's a 28, uh, 26 horsepower Mahindra with a backhoe on it pretty proud of the work so all right everybody I'm gonna wash up go into town get a bite to eat uh, I want to make sure my chickens are tucked in first before I head into town they're heading that way <laughs> but uh, y'all have a very good day like subscribe follow me along thank you bye